Hi, I'm Mary McPherson, CEO of the Oakville Hospital Foundation. And today I'm standing in front of our beautiful donor wall that recognizes you, our donors. And in this very unusual year, we have an unusual way to wrap it up. And today we are so pleased that we will be joined by Cindy McDonald, our Senior Vice President of Clinical Operations here at Halton Healthcare, who will take us on a journey of how OTMH has navigated this pandemic year. And more importantly, you will see how you, our donors, have made a difference in our community and everything that you did to make sure that we were safe during this pandemic. It's hard to believe that 14 months ago we were just starting on our, our COVID journey. And at that time, many people in our community didn't really understand what a pandemic was. But in fact, at the hospital, we've been preparing for pandemics for a lot of years. Many of you will remember 2003, the SARS outbreak that happened in our area, and then followed in 2009 by H1N1. So some of the things we learned through SARS and H1N1 was the value and the importance of having enough PPE stock in. The province actually bought a lot of ventilators and they stored them throughout the province in the event of a pandemic. And interestingly enough, one of the storage sites was right here at OTMH. So we've had some of the provincial stock in our basement through this entire time. Our initial response to COVID actually happened in long-term care facilities. As we were preparing to address the number of patients that were coming to hospital, we started to hear of some of the concern long-term care was experiencing with not only the COVID burden among their residents and their patients, but also the COVID burden among their staff. So part of our response at Halton Healthcare was to send teams of clinicians into long-term care homes throughout our region to do assessments on, on patients and residents to bring back those that needed help to the hospital. And because of the burden that they were having among their staff, we actually sent teams in to take over some of the care in many of the homes. Through the course of the first wave of the pandemic, we were in over 20 different homes, some for a day, some for weeks. We also sent some of our staff along with the paramedics to do testing. And that leads me to my next initiative, which is our COVID-19 testing centre. Over a year ago, we set up three testing centres, one in each of our communities. And over the past year, up till the end of May, we have tested almost a quarter of a million people in Halton Region. You've heard us talk a lot about the internal field hospital here at OTMH and we're so thrilled to be able to take you behind these closed doors for a look with Cindy. One of our most important initiatives was to create bed capacity for COVID patients. We were anticipating large numbers of COVID patients and we knew that we would have to be able to meet that need. And one of the things that we did here at the OTMH site was to look at our shelled in space. For those of you who've heard shelled in space before, it's unfinished space that we developed when we built the hospital in anticipation of needing the space at some time in the future. But it wasn't finished. So as part of the response to COVID, we created an internal field hospital. I know you've heard about field hospitals throughout the province, but here at OTMH, it's inside the building. And while the finishing is not here, as you can see looking behind me, we've created temporary walls, temporary curtains, we've put beds in here, and we are running a 40 bed internal field hospital here that allows us to meet the ongoing increasing demand for beds. And while I'm talking about bed capacity, I wanted to take a minute to tell you about our ICU bed capacity. One of the most difficult questions I get asked is how many ICU beds do you have? Usually what people mean is how many be ICU beds do you have in your intensive care unit? But an ICU bed is really a bed, a patient to put into it, staff to look after the patient, physicians to look after the patient, and equipment to outfit that bed. Where that patient ultimately ends up, if they have all of those resources around them, doesn't really matter. Now we're still in the field hospital and we have not put intensive care unit patients here in the field hospital, but we have created on other units intensive care space. So while OTMH has 21 funded ICU beds, we have increased those beds over the past three months by four beds every week to a maximum of 40 ICU beds. That's a huge accomplishment. And what we've been able to do is probably one of, I think, Oakville Hospital's finest moments in COVID. In response to COVID, the province set up an incident management system or command center table in Toronto, who's responsible for looking at the COVID burden across all the hospitals in the province. 
They make decisions as to which hospitals are becoming overwhelmed and make arrangements to have patients from those hospitals transferred to hospitals that can meet their needs. By the end of May, we had taken over 400 IMS transfers. That's more than any other hospital in the province and something that we're particularly proud of in terms of our response to COVID. One thing you can say about COVID is it's given us all an opportunity to contribute back to our, our system and our province. No reflection of 2020 would be complete without screening. We're all so used to it now here in the building and everywhere we go. But back in the early days of the pandemic, when the hospital was still getting used to things, they asked uh, some of us in the foundation to assist with screening and I was honored and privileged to take a part of that. So for a couple of weeks, eight hours a night, we would staff a desk like this and ensure that the hospital was safe. And one thing I will also never forget is the woman whose water broke while I was screening her and I raced her up to maternity and someday I hope to meet that pandemic baby. And the last initiative I want to tell you about is our COVID-19 vaccination centre. We were asked last fall to consider setting up a vaccination centre and we chose the OTMH site for a lot of reasons. One of which is we can handle the volumes here and this building has been built. To, to accommodate some of the things that we've had to do through COVID with the social distancing, patients flow through this vaccine center. So we started in early December, and I'm really proud to say that recently we celebrated 100,000 vaccines that we've given in our auditorium here at the OTMH site. One of the other reasons we chose the OTMH site to host our vaccination center was because of our ability to store the Pfizer vaccine here. We have the special freezers, and we have an incredible pharmacy department that can handle transporting the vaccine and reconstituting it for the numbers that we're dealing with. This vaccine has given us the opportunity to finally play offense against this virus and it's a feel good moment for us. Over the past year, I've often been asked how staff and physicians in particular have been dealing with the, the COVID crisis. And I have to tell you that as I go through the building and I listen to the stories that they tell about dealing with our COVID patients and dealing with this pandemic, Certainly they're tired, certainly it's been a long haul and I don't want to downplay that. But the overwhelming feeling and what the stories that I'm hearing are all about having made a difference, getting back in touch with the things that got us into healthcare in the first place, and a real sense of pride and gratitude that they've been able to be part of this and to have made such a difference in the lives of the, of the citizens in our community. I think I speak for all of us here at the hospital when I say it's been a privilege to have been part of this and we're all looking forward to the end. On behalf of our staff and physicians, as well as our patients and their families, I really want to offer my heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you for your support over the past year. We may not have been able to see you, but we've seen you. We've seen what you've done for us, we've felt what you've done for us, and we feel the love and support from all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy, for sharing that reflection of this past year. And I want to thank all of you, our donors, for everything you did to support the hospital this year. For the last 14 months, Everybody in the building behind me, the frontline workers, the behind the scene workers have been relentless in their compassionate care of this community, making sure that we stay safe. And you, our donors, have done so much for us. Your donations, your donations of PPE, the food that you dropped off, the gifts, the painted rocks, the honks, the kindness that you've showed to our staff. We are incredibly grateful. What Cindy will remember about the pandemic is how everyone responded. But what I will remember is that we were honored enough to be on the front line of generosity, to see this community that is so filled with love and compassion and grace and kindness that really supported the hospital when we needed you the most. Because of you, we are hopeful for the future. And I look forward to seeing you all soon and thanking you in person for everything that you have done in this extraordinary, unusual, 2020 year.